Hello everybody and welcome back to the break time prediction video. Today we will be breaking down the three fight changes in seven or eight hours. Craziest pre-fight day in my four years of watching MMA since 2018. Honestly guys, I have I've never seen that. <laughs> this is why we love the UFC, ladies and gentlemen. No fights are on in the stand <laughs> This shit is insane, bro. Um, yeah, I'll be breaking down these three fights. The you know the three actual good fights of this card. There's a few decent bangers in there, but like Hakeem Dawoodu versus Arusa, but no one really like it. Something really getting big attention for me to the casuals, but the hardcores love those kind of fights. Um, so yeah, let's get into D Rod taking on Li Jing Liang. Li Jing Liang, kind of feel bad for the guy, you know. Kind of feel bad for the guy. He got a new suit. Started trying to speak English. Learn him. For the press conference. And is now at a 9 uh, point weight disadvantage. Because obviously we know Kevin Holland was taking on Daniel Rodriguez on 3 weeks notice. At a catch weight of 180 pounds. Um, yeah. I mean. This is the kind of bullshit when you look at it. Like, So we have Nate Diaz was taking on. Hamza Shemaev, okay, yeah. Hamza Shemaev weighs in at 178 pounds, around there. But it's okay for Li Jing Liang to, you know, fight Daniel Rodriguez here. Come on, man. This is some bullshit. I kind of feel bad for Li Jing. He's been so unlucky. He's been bullshitted this whole week. He's, I, kinda, I, I want him to win, but I don't because I'm putting money on d -Rock. Okay, so don't win. Um, I'm going to put. I'm gonna say, tell you why I think d Rod wins here. D Rod, in my opinion, is going to win by just having the edge on the striking numbers here. Let's go. Sorry, my eye is so like crispy. <laughs> um, Dan Rodriguez has the look. We go to stats. Strikes landed per minute. We both know that Leach and Dan Rodriguez are both boxers, and we're boxing heavy. Leaching nine likes to you know maybe switch into uh, a right hook or a left hook, switch stances, mid combination, and blitzes really well. Um, Dan Rodriguez is more the you know standard boxer. Sorry, my neck. Um, so and I think that the striking, the he he's gonna have the winning win it winning winning minute winning advantage here. Who's gonna have that? Dan Rodriguez is gonna have that. 8.24 strikes landed per minute as we go down to strikes absorbed or uh, no strikes uh, where is it there it is he's around here yes uh, striking differential he lands 3 more than his opponents do on him so you know he's landing way more than his opponents do on him he's absorbing around 5 which isn't a good look but you know he's he's taking that chance to land more than you than you obviously if you're landing more like if you're landing 8.2 or something strikes per minute you're gonna be getting hit more because you're taking more chances and getting into action more so you know i think that the leech lands four strikes per minute around there and absorbs three I don't think he's gonna win minutes here. I'm gonna go go with the guy who has more win it, uh, more minute winning capabilities in this fight, and I think it's Daniel Rodriguez. And it's gonna be a, a boxing. Can see Leach going for takedowns here. It wouldn't be a bad idea for him going for for Leach going for takedowns, but Daniel Rodriguez. I just like the striking numbers he throws up. He's always landing a hundred plus strikes in a fight in a three rounder. Like that's impressive, man. At welterweight especially. Um, you don't see you don't see many guys like that. Uh, Hamza Shamayev obviously being one, and Jordan Wright's at welterweight, but you don't see many like many of these guys at higher weight class. So you more you see it usually at like one forty five, one thirty five, one twenty five. Um, so yeah, give me uh Dan Rodriguez to win the minute the minute on this fight and get a decision. I have in a pot. I have him in a parlay. Sorry for stirring so much. I am absolutely tired. It's currently two o'clock in the morning. I should be asleep right now. But, you know, I'm doing a breakdown because I love MMA. Shit does things to me, man. Um, so going on to Hamza Shemai, I've taken on um, Kevin Holland. Another fight that was just booked on this, on this day. Um, should be an easy fight again for Hamza Shemaev here. I think that Hamza Shemaev is going to have the takedowns here. He, we know that he likes to get takedowns from that body lock, body, you know, kind of get your uh, hands around, just drag you to the ground or some, uh, like, lose kind of, uh, takedowns. I think that's going to work against Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland was taken down by Tim Means. 
Tim Means is not a level of Hamza Chimaev in a whole in the take down department. I don't think Hamza Chimaev's take downs are like, like, elite, elite, elite would mean like, Khabib wise. I don't think he's like that. I think that there are guys like an Usman Kasop that I don't think he'd get strength based takedowns on Usman or like double legs on the fence kind of thing. I don't even get that in my opinion. I think that Usman would beat Hamza Chamaev because we knew Hamza Chamaev doesn't really move his head that much. Uh, he keeps on the center line. I think Usman would jab his face on face off. But that's besides the point. We're talking about Hamza Chamaev taking on Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland, decent off his back. We've seen him knock out Jacare Sousa, threw up, uh, threw up arm try or not arm triangles. Uh, triangle chokes from the bottom against him. Almost got one. He was kind of in deep um, against him. Um, but I think Hamza Chamaya should be able to get this fight to the ground. Maybe grind on him in the first round. Take it slow. It's a five round fight. We have seen him slow down. But that was in a crazy paced fight against Gilbert Burns. Anyone would have slowed down in that fight for sure. Um, Hamza Chamaya, he is injured though. He's for sure injured. Um, we knew this by, because he's had an ankle wrap in training. Um over the past like week uh videos have came out and he has had uh he's been limping and embedded so that could play a factor but even on like one leg I, I still think he should beat kevin holland here stylistically it's a bad matchup even kevin holland was like jurgen was uh, saying uh is this a good matchup or whatever and he said f no um but i'm gonna have some fun or something like that so yeah this should be a good good matchup here for hamza chamaev and i think that um, you should get the fight down to the ground pretty easily against Captain Holland. Um, I don't, I don't expect Captain Holland to go down without a fight for sure. I don't think he'll just get this. Like, I, I think he'll get destroyed, but I think he'll, you know, have some cool moments in there. Maybe land a few punches and maybe a few leg kicks or something like that. But Hamza Chimaev should be able to get this done. Gonna go around two, get their back, flatten them out, and get that stoppage victory. Um. He was, I got him at minus 400 in a parlay. I think he's probably like minus 600 now. So, you know, I got away with that one. That's good. Love to see it. Getting ahead of that line movement. Uh, going up the card, the People's Main Event, BB. Obviously, it's a main event, but this shit, if this is like a, I don't know, a cool main event, this would be the People's Main Event. Like, this shit is a fire main event. Tony Ferguson, Al Q, taking on Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz. Last, it's going to be last, his last fight. And honestly, this is such a good last fight to have. I know, like, he, I don't even think he's, like, is he into fighting that much anymore? Like, does he, like, really want to fight a lot? I don't think so, personally. Like, his commitment to the game isn't the same. But I'm sure, like, finding a guy like Tony Ferguson would make him, like, okay, let's, let's go, let's throw down. Um, I'm sure he knew that his back was against the wall against Hamza Chimaev for sure. But against Tony, Tony Ferguson, he's probably like, I can, I can beat this guy. I can, I can survive against this guy. Uh, have some fun in there. Against a fun guy who brings action. Guy who throws a variety of strikes. Um, and I think Tony Ferguson is, will be the same. I think he will have so much fun in that octagon. Finding a guy who's lesser than his four la his last four opponents. We know Tony Ferguson's over the hill. 30 year 38 years of age. Coming off a, a massive knockout loss to Michael Chandler. Did really well against Michael Chandler. However, you know, dropped him. Maybe whatever, trip, whatever. But, you know, he had Michael Chandler and all sorts of problems with it. His eye was going. Um, you know, Tony for uh I'm I'm sure if Michael Chandler admitted to it, he, he was he was kind of nervous. Uh, it looked like Tony Ferguson. The tide was going in his favor, but you know Tony Ferguson, all always a fun fighter to watch, man. Always brings it. Gonna be in the Hall of Fame. One of the best fighters to ever. Never won a belt somehow. I mean, he won the interim belt, never the undisputed belt. But if you think about it, that's probably the only undisputed belt I would ever consider the champ. Like, it was Conor McGregor as the champ, but like really was it not really and then like Khabib won it against Ally Quinta but we'll never talk about that but yeah give me uh Tony Ferguson to like cut off the cage here I think his forward pressure his cutting off the cage ability and the elbows when he gets you cl gets close to you I think that's gonna be able to get uh the Diaz out of here like I really do I think that the overall damage in the maybe fourth fifth round he might be able to get a stoppage but I would not be surprised if this went to the decision I really would not be surprised um 
no matter what happens, Nate Diaz has won. Nate Diaz has won at the end of the day. He can say, oh yeah, Hamza Jemayev gave up, whatever. But in my opinion, it's just, it's just a conspiracy. Were they really ever going to fight? Kind of weird. Um, But, you know... It's going to be a really fun fight, man. I think that Tony Ferguson should be able to get it done. Maybe mix in a few takedowns, but I can't see him doing that. I think it'll go out, have fun, you know, get uh, get a good payday here. We'll get pay-per-view uh, numbers, won't he? Surely, pay-per-view shares. And, um, yeah, I'm sure this whole controversy over the past day has added a few hundred K buys. This will probably do, like, 600 K. In my opinion, this will do, like, 600 K. A card that was probably going to do, in my opinion, 100 K. I mean, maybe not 600k, but 400, 300. Like, 400, 300 in this day age is pretty good. Like, Israel Adesanya, UFC 276, sold around. What was it? 300k? That, I mean, that's terrible. The most stacked card of the year so far sold 300k with a, a star. A star. Yes, a star. Um, I mean, come on. Um, But, yeah. Really fun fight. Tony Ferguson going to get the job done. That fourth, fifth round. Damage will add up. Um... And the the cutting of the cage, the striking variety, the elbows, the punches, uh, gonna add up on Nate Diaz. I mean, no Nate Diaz's uh, scar tissue is pretty bad and gets cut up very easily. Uh, so yeah, give me Tony Ferguson my fourth round TKO. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will go through my bets right here. Tony Ferguson, I have in a parlay with. Hamza Shemaev and Dino Rodriguez. The three fights I just predicted for you there, all my parlay. I have. Hamza Chimaev, uh, Hakeem Davidi, and Jake Collier in a parlay. And then I have last one, Johnny Walker, underdog. Do you think he'll be, I do think he will get the job done. I'm up 14 point something units. Uh, excuse me, 10 out of 12 MMA profits every single uh, UFC event I bet on in my like three, no, three weeks. Like, Seven weeks of betting. Um, I have came out in profit. Um, the only two losses I have had are the uh, Dana White Contender Series losses, but I've won uh, on Dana White Contender Series like three times. So I'm like three and two in Dana White Contender Series. So if you want to tell, not a bad play because it seems like I'm okay at betting <laughs> so far. So, who do you guys enjoyed? Please like down below. Comment your predictions for the top three or whatever you whatever plays you like. I might tell you if they're good. And hope you guys enjoyed. Yeah. Uh follow me on Twitter also at MMA Aaron M M A A R R Zero N. Uh for more updates, more, you know, just having conversations on there, interacting with one another uh, one another. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you later on next week probably do a Corey Sandhagen versus Song Yudong breakdown. Uh yeah. Peace.